How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about April Fool's Day from 2008. This is directed by the Butcher Brothers and stars Taylor Cole and Josh Henderson. Um, this is a remake of the original 1986 film. I do have a review for the 86 film. If you haven't seen it, I'm not the biggest fan of that movie, so when I saw they were doing a remake, I wasn't as protective, and I was more like, okay, let's see what they do with the material this time around. It also had been over 20 years, I think like 22, between the two movies, so yeah, it's time to do a remake. Um, so that being said, let's just dive right into the plot. I'm not going to do any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what this movie's about. So let's uh, go into the plot. We open up on 2007's April Fool's Day Party. <clears throat> this movie came out in 2008, so this is one year ago. And it's a coming out party as well for this girl named Mulan. Now I'm not entirely sure what a coming out party is, from what I gather in the movie, it's when you have a young person and they grow up enough and the coming out party is to formally introduce them into rich society, I guess. Uh, anyway, at this party you get to meet all your characters. Uh, a lot of them are rich in society people in this version. And they do the same thing as the first with the uh, handheld camera. In the original, they were all kids. One of them had a camera, was goofing it around, pointing at all his friends, and their friends were doing silly stuff. Here, they hire their camera nerd friend to do a gig, so he's getting paid to be there and is doing this professionally. In turn, a lot more people talk to the camera in a more straightforward manner, but I do like that this was one of the ahead-of-its-time elements in the 86 version, I'm glad they brought it over, and the camera overall plays more of an important part. It's not a found footage movie by any means, but it's one of the cool things from the original. Glad to see it there. Glad to see it have a bigger part. Um, anyway, as the party goes on, we find out that Muffy's brother is um, interested in Mulan there, and so is the cameraman, and there's in turn kind of a love triangle there. Um... The brother is talking to Milan, and suddenly she has a headache, and the brother takes her into the house to have her lie down, takes her to one of the beds, and rather than stopping there, decides, hey, maybe he should try to fool around, and granted that she's not in the best headspace, she's groggy and a little out of it, this is not a smart decision, and the sister, Muffy, well, not Muffy, Desiree now, uh, knows about this. She takes the camera and sneaks into the room to record them. You see, the brother has control of the family fortune, as stated in their parents' will, and she wants some dirt on the brother so that she can bid for control of the family state instead. Uh, one by one, the characters see someone's filming in the room, and they all start to crowd around and look in, they eventually barge in before too long and go, ha ha, we found you, and the girl gets up, she's in quite a state, she is not really understanding the world around her, and accidentally backs up and falls out the balcony to her death. So that's a pretty good 10 minute hook. Unfortunately, it uh, actually took 20 minutes to get to this point, instead of 10, so uh, the movie's opening is is a bit long, um, but we cut to one year later, almost. It's uh, late March, and uh, we find what has happened since then. Uh, the death was ruled an accident, but uh, they found out that, yes, there was drugs in her system, but they don't know how they got there, if someone put them there or what. Uh, but in light of all that happened, the control of the estate did get transferred to the sister, and everybody who was involved is kind of looked at in kind of a suspect manner, so no one really likes that this happened, except for the uh, 
gossip reporter guy who basically built his career around it. Um, so the situation has changed a little bit, and um, cut to April 1st, and they all get I know what you did last summer style messages. Um, they get a note slipped under their door saying, come to the gravestone at noon, I have proof. So yeah, this movie does borrow quite a bit from I Know What You Did Last Summer. The first one felt a little bit like Agatha Christie's and then there were none. This one's gonna feel a little bit like I Know What You Did Last Summer. All the main characters meet at the gravesite, talk to each other a little bit, and then a delivery man comes with a note and a portable DVD player. The note says um, that if whoever killed the girl doesn't step forward, they'll all be picked off one by one. Um, and of course, none of them are going to admit to drugging this girl. And the DVD player shows that he's already killed off one of them. So whoever this person is has already killed off one guy. Now, they all don't know what to do. They go about their own personal lives when, of course, they get picked off one by one by the mysterious killer. And let's talk a little bit about the kills. This is one of the bigger changes. In the first one, most of the kills were cutaway kills. That is, the few of them that you actually saw. A lot of the first movie's kills were off-screen, which makes a lot of people wish that movie was pitched more as a murder mystery and less as a slasher. Here, the kills are all front and center and big. Um, these kills are are there, which I do like. The first one, the kills not being there, and when they are, they cut away. That was one of that movie's greatest flaws. And here, you actually get to see them. So by default, a plus. But that being said, a lot of these kills are super, super dumb. Uh, the first kill that we see, there's a guy who in the prologue, they mentioned didn't know how to swim. And he's got this little, little dog. Now he goes out one night, he hears the dog yiping, and he sees it in the bottom of the pool. So he jumps in the pool to save the dog, only to find that it's actually a toy dog that's been barking, and since he's in the pool and he doesn't know how to swim, he drowns. Now, this is kind of dumb for a few reasons. One, the idea that you can be fooled by a toy dog, and if it's on the bottom of the pool, how are you hearing it barking? That's a little weird. But also, if this guy doesn't know how to swim, why does he own a pool? Like, I guess if you're rich and wealthy, you can just afford these things. But it's literally a very expensive possession you can't use. And if you, think, if you, if you had a pool, you think you would learn to swim just so you could use it. So right off the bat, it's kind of dumb. And the second kill is also dumb as well. It involves electricity. And I find it highly implausible. And a lot of the kills are like that, where they're big and over the top, but also kind of silly. But like I said, in the first movie, they weren't even there. So I guess this is technically better. But yeah, it is, uh, it is kind of dumb. And let's talk a bit about the changes, too. In the first movie... The, the kids were all college kids. They were younger, and they all had problems and dreams. You know, they wondered what their future was going to be like because they were going to graduate soon. And you got the sense that each one of them wanted something, and they had a, a life they wanted to get. So they're all really good and likable characters. They were goof-offs, but they were fun goof-offs, and we liked them. Here, they're rich, and in general, all the, char all the characters are caricatures. You get the politician and his wife that was a, a former supermodel, and then you get the girl that's an actress, and yeah, they're all really rich, and in turn that kind of makes them harder to sympathize with. That's why whenever you see a movie and there's a rich person, they focus more on what the audience would like to do if they were rich and less on, you know, the rich person's, you know, personal troubles or attending rich person life. You know, in general, that's not as relatable, but if you have the main character be Batman, 
that's really cool and we can focus on that, but if it's not what we think we'd do if we were rich, we often can kind of dismiss these characters. Um, so yeah, they're not as young and relatable. Um, and also, uh, a big change in this movie is we're following Muffy around. In the first one, there was more of a final girl character. Here, we're following Muffy as she's trying to uncover the mystery. And the first one, one house on, a, on an island all by yourself, isolation. Here, it is a city-spanning mystery where you go to several different sets. You get the big mansion, of course. You get a movie set. You get an apartment. You get the campaign room, you know. So this is much bigger and spread out and automatically feels really, really different. There are a few Easter eggs to the first movie. If you remember the first one, they all had little Barbies representing themselves. And here, one of the girls is named Barbie. Uh, you also get, when you look at the grave, when they all meet around the gravestone, the girl was born in 1986, which was the year the first movie came out, which also kind of makes everyone who saw that movie in theaters feel old. So I don't know if that was the best Easter egg. Um, so there is little Easter eggs, in the, but other than just being kind of passing references, um, there's not terribly much to tie it to the, the plot. Even the party, which was the big thing in the first one, is just in the hook of this one, and there's no party for the rest of the movie. So it kind of is a passing glance at the original, but overall, very different. It's much less, uh, and then there were none, much more I Know What You Did Last Summer. If you like movies in that style, Urban Legend, Valentine, you might like this, although this is kind of one of the dumber ones. It's kind of silly, but yeah, it is very, very different from the first, which um, I guess brings me to the ending, which I obviously won't spoil. But they did tweak the ending a little bit. They did find something interesting to do with that ending. If you remember my review for the first one, I said the ending really ruined it and made everything beforehand irrelevant. And I really didn't like that ending because it just made the whole movie into, well, I guess that doesn't matter. Here, they, they tweak it a little bit. And rather than everything not mattering, you're like, okay, that makes sense this time around. I see what they were building towards, and I personally, I think this ending was kind of cool, the way they, they tweaked it a bit, and it made the whole thing change shape, and you're like, okay, I, I get that now. So I actually do prefer this movie's ending, and that's the thing is, the first one had a better setup. The first one had more relatable characters. The first one actually had way more to do with April Fool's Day. That's another thing, too, the... A lot of the pranks are toned down. You almost don't notice it's April Fool's Day. But that being said, um, it's kind of a case of Alien 3 versus Alien 4. Alien 3 was much better made, but ultimately the beginning ticked me off. And Alien 4 was a goofy movie, but nothing about it got me upset. And the remake of April Fool's Day... It's silly, it's dumb, but nothing in here really upsets me. In the original, it was better made, and it had cool points, better characters, better April Fool's Day prank, better setting, but it did something at the end that made me upset, and this movie doesn't upset me. So, I guess, technically, I like this one better, even though I know it's stupid, it's... It's a cheesy slasher movie from uh, the late 2000s that, you know, feels a little bit more like movies from a few years before, so a little out of date. But overall, it's fun. Now, don't expect too much of it, but a good, dumb, fun slasher? Eh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Now, if you're fans of the original, you probably won't like this. They'll have messed up your baby, but like I said... I wasn't a fan of the original, so I could just sit back and have fun with it. It's dumb, but I like it. Um, but if you like the, the first one, you probably won't. Uh, anyway, that being said, uh, thank you for watching. Um, 
when I cover horror movies, when I cover movies on here, I cover 95% horror movies, so if you like horror, I'll probably have uh, more reviews you might like. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom so you can find stuff that's kind of related to this. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day.